This book is called The Runaway Dinner by Alan Albert and Bruce Bigman. So, looking at the cover, I can see a little boy chasing a pea, an, a knife, a fork, and a sausage. Now, if we think back to what we've been learning this week in science, do we think that this, that these items right here are living things? We know that a fork and a knife and a pea and a sausage don't need air to live. They don't need shelter to live or light or food because they are non-living. But in this book, it looks like they've come to life. So we know this must be fiction. All right, listen to hear the story. Now here's a story for you full of such fun and exciting stuff. You will surely love it. And the best part is, it's all true. The Runaway Dinner. So here we see a few more characters coming in. I see a plate, some things that look like french fries, a dog, a mom and a dad maybe, and it says, one, two, three, go! Looks like the, the carrots are racing. Here's a timer with a knife and a hat. How silly. There once was a boy, Banjo. His name was, yes, Banjo Cannon. Well, he was a little boy, this boy. Lived in a house, slept in a bed, wore the usual sorts of clothes, socks and scarves and such. Loved his cat named Mildred, his mom and dad named Mr. and Mrs. And every day, Summer or winter, rain or shine, had a sausage for his dinner. On his own little plate, with his own little knife and fork and salt shake shaker and ketchup, at his own little table with his own little chair, Yes, a sausage, a sausage for his dinner. Now here's the exciting part, the unbelievable part, though it is all true. One sunny summer day, just as Banjo, with his knife in one hand and his fork in the other, was leaning forward and smiling happily at the thought of eating his dinner. The sausage Melvin, with his, his name was, jumped, yes, jumped right off the plate. So now the sausage has a name. How silly. And ran away. I'm sure Banjo is thinking, what in the world is going on? Look at his face. He looks so shocked. He's about to put it in his mouth. But there he goes off the table. Well then, of course, as you might expect, the fork ran after the sausage, the knife ran after the fork, the plate ran after the knife, the little table, the little chair ran after the plate. They've all got their faces going down the path outside. And Banjo, that hungry little boy, ran after them all. Let's see what's going to happen. This is so crazy. Actually, if you want the whole truth, he ran after the few, after a few others as well. You see, Banjo did not only have a sausage on his plate. That would be silly, wouldn't it? Just a sausage, one measly little sausage for a hungry boy's dinner? No, Banjo also had three fat peas, four baby carrots, and a handful of fries. And yes, the thing is, of course, they were all on the plate as well. And when Melvin ran off, they, as you might expect, followed him. People are peeking out of their houses wondering what is going down the road. The peas, as it happened, were all boys. Peter, Percival, and Paul. And the carrots, all girls. Caroline, Clara, Camilla, and Christabel. As for the fries, well... There really were too many to name them all. Though being French, of course, they had names like Francois, Fifi, and so forth. So that's it, the absolute truth, the complete picture. See, 
Here they are, the whole lot of them, not forgetting Mildred, the cat, and Mr. and Mrs. and Bruce, and the next-door neighbor's dog, nearly did forget him, though they were chasing Mildred, actually all racing down the road. If we look back, we see that there's now a whole road full of non-living objects running down the road, and people are just absolutely shocked at their sight of what was going on. Well, the first thing that happened was the carrots. All four of them escaped by hiding in a paper bag. Bruce chased Mildred up the tree, and a pigeon ate Percival. Uh-oh, the french fry. Or the pea. Melvin, meanwhile, was running strongly on his two little legs. He came to a crosswalk, waited for the walk light, crossed the road, and ran into the park. Well, at least he was being safe and ran when the car was stopped. But that is crazy that a sausage would know to do that. The next thing that happened was Mr. and Mrs. bought three ice creams. A couple of french fries escaped by sailing away in a toy boat. Au revoir, bon voyage, hurrah. Since they were French, they were speaking in French. And they just ate Paul. There's the duck. There go the French fries. And the rest are still continuing on this crazy, silly race. Banjo, meanwhile, was running strongly on his two little legs and the chair and the table were running strongly on their four little legs. Actually, that's not entirely true. The little chair was in, per in particular was quite out of breath. He had to stop and rest for a while. The on only then, an old lady came along and sat on him. She was out of breath, too. So then, of course, the little chair was stuck there for a long time. Uh-oh. He's going to get separated from the rest of the group. Melvin, meanwhile, was still racing away with the fork and knife close behind and the little plate and Mr. and Mrs. and so forth. If we look at the picture, he must have been there a long time. Through the sun, through the rain, as it got darker and into night as they continued running on. Presently, a picnicking family spotted the fork and the knife, too, and grabbed them. At the same time, a boiled egg named Billy saw what was going on and, in the confusion, ran off for himself. Here goes the little egg. A couple of little girls who were skipping on the grass spotted the plate and grabbed her. She was a girl plate, Saskia was her name, and started using her as a frisbee, which as it turned out, whee! The little plate much enjoyed it. Well, now there was a pond in the park, and that's where the toy boat was going. And Melvin ran around it. And there was a baseball field, and Melvin ran around that. The rest of the french fries stopped here and sat down to watch the baseball game, actually, and nobody noticed them. <laughs> here they are, sitting with the players, and over here watching. Yep, we've got another non-living object that this author and illustrator have had come to life. But, uh, but by this time, the sunny summer's day was coming to an end, and almost everybody was out of breath. Melvin, that sturdy little sausage, slowed to a stroll. He would waddle, and finally stopped altogether, whereupon along came Banjo, that hungry little boy. And oh dear, what do you think is going to happen, boys and girls? I see a hand reaching down towards Melvin. Let's read on. Ate him. There's the egg that is in shock. 
Well, nearly, he would have done, he really would, only just then along came his hot and bothered poor old mom. No, no, she cried, don't eat that, meaning Melvin. Don't eat that, it's been on the ground. The next thing that happened was Melvin seized his chance, ran off again, and hid in the long grass. Where, as it turned out at that very moment, the baseball named Marlin was also hiding. There's our little baseball hiding. Meanwhile, the athletic little table urged on by the salt shaker and the ketchup was still racing along. His style was much admired by a number of park benches. On the other hand, Peter, the last of the peas, remember him, had well and truly disappeared. It was a mystery. Now, in real life, are, are park benches living things? No. He had to be there somewhere. Yes, take a look and see if you can spot him. Does anyone see the little pea? Peter? I see him. Take a second to look. Look up in the trees. There he is. It was a sunny summer evening. Home went Banjo, carried high on the shoulders of his poor old dad and his poor old mom. Bruce, the next door neighbor's dog, went home too. And down the tree came Mildred. So there we are, that's the story. Full of such fun, don't you agree? And exciting stuff, yes. Of course, poor little Banjo is still hungry, hungrier than ever, in fact. Luckily, help is at hand. You see, every day or evening, rain or shine, summer or winter, after his dinner, Banjo has a plum pie for his dessert. Uh-oh, what's gonna happen now? In his own little bowl, with his own little spoon, with his own little pitcher of cream. Yes, a plum pie, a plum pie, named Joyce on this particular occasion for his dessert. Do we think that this plum pie is going to run off? So that's all right. Isn't it? Uh-oh. There goes the pie! The end. I hope you enjoyed my runaway dinner story. I thought it was really silly and just a really good book to read. Hope you enjoyed it.